Hello, everyone. This is the All Atlantic podcast. Welcome to this second season. My name is Mariana. I'm from Brazil and I am the host of this season. I also from the first cohort of the All Atlantic Ocean Youth Ambassadors, and it is a pleasure to talk about the ocean with you all. The All Atlantic Talks podcast fosters the engagement of stakeholders, joint pilot actions, and youth ambassadors of the All Atlantic Ocean Research and Innovation Alliance. This podcast is coordinated by the Brazilian National Council of State Funding Agencies, the Brazilian National Council for Scientific and Technological Development, and the Brazilian Ministry of Science, Technology and Innovation, and is under the Encore project that is supported by the European Commission. In this first episode of the new season, we want to get to know more about the iPlastic project. We want to talk about the fate of micro and nanoplastic with three special guests. Sergio Rossi from the Università del Salento in Italy, Michael Grillo from the Autonomous University of Barcelona, Spain, and Marcelo Oliveira Soares from the Federal University of Ceará, Brazil. Hello, I'm Sergio Rossi, an associate professor of the Università del Salento, and I'm the leading the Italian group of researchers and professors of this plastic that uh, has uh, begun just a uh, few uh, years ago. Hello everyone, I'm Mikael Goro from the Autonomous University of Barcelona in Spain and uh, from uh, the ICTA, our institute, who are coordinating the GPI Ocean Eye Plastic project with the four uh, other countries, so Brazil, Portugal, Spain and Italy. Hi everyone, my name is Marcelo Suarez. Okay, I'm from Brazil too, like Mariana. <laughs> I am professor from the Institute of Marine Sciences from the Federal University of Ceará in the northeast of Brazil. I'm leading the research uh, group of scientists from Brazil specifically. Well, thank you for accepting this invitation. I am really curious to know more about the iPlastic project. So I would like to ask Mikael, how are you investigating the land-sea interface to identify sources of plastic pollutants? So very briefly, the iPlastic project is an international project. As I said, there are four countries involved uh, within this project. Brazil, Portugal, Spain and Italy were coordinating the project since uh, Barcelona in Spain. And we are addressing different topics within this project. So first, for example, the source and fate of microplastic, as you said, in the land ocean interface. So basically we are focusing our monitoring in rivers, in estuaries actually, which are just at the limit between the continent and the sea. And uh, we are measuring the, the fluxes of microplastic that we can find uh, in this estuaries. So we are monitoring actually three estuaries, uh, one in Brazil, uh, the Coco River in Fortaleza. There is an estuary in Portugal, the Mondego River. And finally, in Spain, we have the, the Ebro River uh, on the Mediterranean side. A part of this in-situ monitoring, we have different other topic covered by the project. So for example, the, the impact of uh, microplastic on the biota, which is mainly done through lab experiment. We are dealing too with the aging and weathering of the plastic. So actually to understand how larger plastic pieces uh, will fragment and become the famous microplastic or even the smallest one, the nanoplastics. Uh, there is another topic that we would like to, to achieve is to characterize and at least to quantify the nanoplastics, which are very, very small particles and which are quite tricky actually to, to characterize in the, the marine environment. And finally, we are trying as well to, to model the fate of the microplastics once they reach the ocean. So what will happen to, to those microplastics? So this is done through, through mainly modeling. So very briefly, this is what we are doing uh, in the iPlastic project. 
Thank you, Mikael. Really interesting, the monitoring strategies you are using to identify sources and also this interesting connection of the continent uh, with white ocean, how the plastic ends there and how it's impacting the biota. Really interesting. Thank you for explaining the iPlastic project for us. I would like to ask Sergio, how are you investigating this team in Italy? Well, uh, what we are doing is basically two things. The first is making experiments with the organisms with benthic suspension videos, or like, for example, sponges, polychaetes, ascidians, and bivalves, to try to understand how these organisms are incorporating microplastics in their tissues. If there is an effect of the mixing of these organisms inside the same becker, in the same aquarium, the same, uh, the same place, which are in some way the organisms that are mostly filtering the particles that we are adding. So in this case, this led us to, to understand that there are some uh, organisms, for example, the sponges, which uptake less microplastics, respect, for example, the bivalves, and uh, the, in this case, the muscles, and uh, also take less microplastic respect to the polychaetes, which is uh, one sabellite, it's Sabella spallanzani. So this is very interesting because what we are trying to understand is which of these organisms are in some way better captures of these microplastics. The second step is to try to understand what happens with the wild fauna in, the, uh, in several places. So what we are looking at in, in general is an uh, organism that may be, let us say, uh, eating these microplastics and incorporating in their uh, tissues and in their in, in some way in their metabolism. On the one side, there are the organisms that are uh, just suspension feeding organisms. Again, ascidians, uh, sponges, uh, uh, olicates, bivalves. Remember that, that the suspension feeder is an organism that stays static in this case, uh, this belted suspension feeding organism and filtrates the water. So the income of the surrounding water is the key to understand the acquisition of the particle. Okay, that's on the one side. On the other side, we have also other organisms, like for example, what is called deposit feeders, like for example, uh, Olothurians, which are eating the sediments that are sediments that are on the floor of the, of the seas. And in that case, the Olothurians, for example, are also eating this kind of small particles. And also fishes and crustaceans, like lobsters or uh, sea breams. So we are also looking a little bit what happens with these organs, not only in Italy, but also in Portugal, they are looking at this kind of uh, concentration. What are the findings? Well, the findings in this case are uh, a little bit worrying. <laughs> For example, Olothurians, 100% of the Olothurians that we just uh, surveyed in the coast of Salento have microplastics inside their guts, their, their stomach. Okay, that's the first. The second, fishes, 80%. Lobsters, 80%. Shrimps that we are like looking at now, just uh, 70 80 percent. In the case of the benthic suspension feeding organs, almost all of them have also microplastics inside. The last thing that we do is just try to understand if these suspension feeding organs may be bioremediators. So, if they can be used in some way in integrated multitrophic aquaculture facilities, if they act as cleaners of the sea. And we see that that's right. That's, uh, that's potentially a thing that is happening. They are filtering and fixing these microplastics inside their structures. So basically, this is very, very uh, resumed what we are doing. And these are the results of the War Package 2 that we are developing. Thank you, Sergio. Uh, how complex is the investigation of plastic in organisms? Uh, their behavior and all the ecological relationships that are being impacted by this, this interaction with plastic is really worried to see these results. Thank you for sharing this with us and explaining so well. Here in Brazil, I know we are also facing several impacts from plastic pollution in the organisms in the coastline and in the ocean. And I would like to ask Marcelo, how are you dealing with this in Ceará? 
Okay, perfect. So uh, I am the leader of the group of scientists. We have more than 10 scientists working right now on the IPLASC projects, including professors and students, master students, PhD students. We have main two groups. In one of them, we have a group dedicated to understand the fluxes of microplastics. This group is led by Professor Carlos Teixeira. Carlos Teixeira is different from the other scientists in the IPLASC because most of the scientists in IPLASC are sampling water, sediments, and biota like Sergio. But Carlos and, of course, his students, they are working mainly using powerful computers. We can use computers, mathematics, to understand the movement of the plastics. Because we know that we have movements from the continent to the oceans, from the oceans to the continents, from the sediments to the water, to the water to the sediments, and a lot of fluxes. Probably you read in the newspapers that the plastics, including the microplastics, can take a long, very long journey for more than 100 of kilometers. And Carlos worker mainly using these computer techniques to understand this movement of the plastics in a long, long distance. And the other group of scientists are sampling on Coco River. Maybe you don't know, but we live in Fortaleza. Fortaleza is the capital of CRI state. Fortaleza has more than 2 million of inhabitants in a very small space, including is considered the most densely city in Brazil. And what is the main problem? We have small rivers. For example, if you see on the map, we have small rivers compared with the rivers in Spain and Portugal. And we have mangroves. We don't have mangroves in Spain or in Portugal, but in Brazil, that is a tropical country, we have mangroves. And mangroves is considered to be a sink. A sink, or, or in other words, is a place that the microplastics can accumulate. And we are working especially, especially on this Coco River. Coco River is a river that crosses the Fortaleza city. And we are trying to understand the impacts of microplastics in the sediments on the water and, of course, and biota, including mollusks and crustaceans. This is our main goal to understand this problem. You know, in moreover, we have other problems. Unfortunately, in Brazil, we have a mismanagement or a lack of management of the plastic debris. Unfortunately, these estuaries in we, where you found the mangroves, it's uh, full of uh, plastics and uh, very polluted areas. And we try to understand these impacts and the movement of the plastics in these environments. Of course, this is important to give uh, science-based policies for conservation of the coastal zones and management, especially for the public authorities. Thank you, Marcelo. I see that all countries and universities involved in the iPlastic project are experiencing the urgency of understanding the source of plastic pollutants so we can improve a monitoring strategy and also to evolve to some decisions that avoid the litter to enter the sea. And I also see that we have to join forces. So I would like to ask you, what is the experience of conducting a multidisciplinary research, as you mentioned, on this important plastic issue? Okay, Mariana, many thanks. So this is important to say, <laughs> we have a long-term collaboration. Um, this is like a basis to do this kind of multidisciplinary research. I visited Barcelona, for example, I was professor in the same institute that Mika works Sergio visited us many times in Fortaleza. Sergio also was a professor in the Autonomous University of Barcelona. And it's a true uh, joint program using the funding agencies from Spain, from Portugal, from Italy, 
And in the case of Brazil, this is important to say, uh, the money comes not from the federal government, like the countries like Italy, Spain, and Portugal. The money in this project, the funding, the research funding from this project comes specifically from the Ceará state. And this is very important because in this case of Brazil, we have the National Council of the Brazilian State Agencies, in Portuguese is CONFAP. CONFAP do a great job doing this, this joint program using the state agencies. We have a lot of states in Brazil, no? do you know? Like uh, Sao Paulo, Rio de Janeiro, Pernambuco, Bahia, in my case, I am the leader and I receive the, the money from the Ceará state. Ceará state is a poor state, in fact, in the northeast of Brazil. But uh, Ceará is a great place to do research because in Ceará we believe in science <laughs> and we are uh, investing a lot of money to do research in the past few years. And this is especially important considering the work of the state agencies. This is the case and this is important to, uh, to join uh, in different sources of uh, funding research. Thank you, Marcelo. How about you, Sergio? How is your experience with this consortium? The experience is very good. So I have been working in different consortiums the, the, the last two decades. And uh, I think it's extremely important to have in mind three different things. Be open-minded, uh, be transparent, and be trustable. So open-minded. The first thing is that you don't know everything, but there are other people that may know things that you need for your, for your, you know, for your targets. Uh, be truly open-minded means that when you are interdisciplinary or transdisciplinary, you indeed give the floor to the other to explain you things and make possible this kind of joint. This is very, very important. That's the first thing is being open-minded. So the chemist, the modeler, the physicist in this case, the biologist, the geochemist, uh, working together, the people that is also working, for example, in social sciences, uh, embrace the same target and exchange, truly exchange this kind of experience. Second thing, transparent. From the beginning, being transparent is extremely important. So you can share your data. You can just uh, make this kind of extremely needed effort to give everything to the other and the other can give everything to you. So you can just uh, share and uh, be sure that at the end there will be a product that can be a paper, can be a report, can be a book, can be a whatever it is. Uh, that is uh, the effort of many people coming together that have different visions and different ways to work. And the third one is also, is, from my point of view, is essential, is to be trustable. Trustable means that when you are working with other people, if you promise something or if you have to, to say something or if you have to just manage some of the tasks and so on and so on, you respond to the needs of the other people and to your own needs, of course, your own commitments. And uh, at the end, if all these things work, by thinking, things are really, really good. And in this very moment, we do need this kind of exchange of know-how. It's, it's a thing that has to be much more common than it used to be. So being transdisciplinary and interdisciplinary it's a word that, you know, full or mounts and full or things, but has to be uh, a real thing. You have to indeed uh, work in this way. Really, really nice to hear these important features to collaboration, to, to be engaged in a research project in a team so important as plastic pollution. Uh, thank you for sharing with us. Uh, Mikael, would you like to, to talk about? Yeah, sure. Uh, personally, I, I have to say that this project and the general experience that I have with this project is very inspiring. As I said, Sergio, I mean, the microplastic research field is really wide and it encompasses so many different topics from uh, fragmentation, fluxes, impact on biota, waste management, and, and so on. And as he said, well, it's so vast that you cannot physically understand everything on your own. 
And this is all the inter interest of this kind of international and multidisciplinary initiatives is that you, you will meet with a bunch of people with their own specialties that will help you to, to tackle this, this issue. I said Sergio and I think Marcelo as well, another very important point to, to carry out this kind of project is the trust. Uh, we had the chance to, to know each other for quite a long time now. And uh, it's true as well with the, the partners from, uh, from Portugal. Although this is the very first time that we, we work with them on an uh, international project. And well, we know where we, we come from and we know what we are able to do for, for this project. And I think that it's a very important thing. And on top of that, I have to say that although it's an international and interdisciplinary project, it's still a quite small project. So it's everybody it can be rich quite easily. There is a, a flow of information between the partners and so on, which is quite easy because of the, the small consortium. And I think this is the main reason why, from my point of view, uh, we are quite successful with the, with this project, uh, because we already published quite many papers since the, the beginning in September, 2020. So, so it's very good. I mean, and different topics were covered from the, the fluxes from laboratory experiments, nanoplastic and so on. It's very nice to work with the with all those people on the on this topic great great thank you so much for sharing your knowledge with us and also your experiences in this collaboration effort for this really important topic that is plastic pollution it was amazing to meeting you congratulations for your work and for the project I would like to recommend that everyone that is listening to us can know more about the iPlastic project on the website, that it's iifenplastic.net. And to end this conversation, I would like to ask you if you want to say a final message, say goodbye, and thank you again for this amazing conversation. So, well, thank you everybody for listening and thank you very much for, for the invitation. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, it was really a pleasure. I want to say just one thing that is, uh, uh, Mick, I, I know him uh, for several years. Marcelo, I know him for uh, 10 years or something like that. And you know that things work very well when you can just go out after the work and take a beer. <laughs> I would like to say thank you so much to listen to us. And it's a great pleasure to be here, Mariana, and, and a great pleasure to work with the team from Portugal, Spain, and Italy. I would like to add one only thing. Uh, we have a cruise leaving from Brazil, from Bahia, that was going to Spain. In other words, we have a scientific cruise that crossed the ocean. And this is one of the most beautiful goals in this project, including I remember the opportunity to a lot of students, especially to two female students from Brazil. This is the first time that these female scientists, they are master students, that they do the first international travel in her lifetime and this is also the first international cruise to cross the ocean this is a great opportunity to in this kind of consortium to have new leaders new beautiful and amazing marine scientists and this is the great thing in this kind of international project thank you so much <laughs> thank you for this inspiring conversation I would like to say to everyone that is listening to us that all the episodes, including the first season of the All Atlantic Talks podcast, are available on YouTube, Spotify, and at allatlanticocean.org. Thank you so much. See you soon. <laughs>